ಸಮಸ್ತಜನಕಲ್ಯಾಣೆ ನಿರತ ಕರುಣಾಮಯ ನಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ದೇವ ಸತ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ವರ ಸತ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ವರ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಚೈಂಡ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ this text bhagwan has been very compassionately telling us the need to be spiritual in life there is a saying prayojanam anuddishya na mandopi pravartate without seeing the need for something we will never be prompted into that thing everything that we have started in life was only because we saw value in it and we felt that we will benefit if we start doing it so many projects were started that way we started learning music we went to some university we brought few things also because it had some kind of prayojanam prayojanam means what benefit it is going to give me in the same way if somebody has to start spiritual spiritual journey if somebody has to start being spiritual one should see the value of spirituality in their life and as we had seen before other texts of vedanta assume that we have already done this enquiry they will not even start with that detailed elaboration of prayojanam they will just write one short line atyantika dukha nivrutti paramananda prapti now what is this dukham how this is how this samsara is having dukham that bhajogovindam will elaborate hmm? in the first verse bhagwan gave a perspective for a person who had made secular knowledge as goal of life hmm? secular knowledge as goal of life bhagwan said nahi nahi rakshati dukhun karane 
That knowledge alone will not save us in difficult times. We need something in addition to that secular knowledge. Second verse was, was, was for somebody who had made position or wealth as goal of life. Bhagwan said that is only the means, it is not the goal. Hmm? That dhanam by itself cannot bring sukham. Dhanam is a means by which one can do dharma, get punya, that punyam brings sukham. And if this person is always thinking about how will dhanam come, hmm? so mind is preoccupied, it is not available for anything else. So that is why he said, Mooda jahihi dhana agama trishnam. Hmm? Agama trishna means how it will come. That trishna one can let go of. Third verse was for somebody who had made pleasures as goal of life. He said, I don't care how these pleasures are attained. I want it at any cost. For that Bhagwan said, Manasi vichintaya varam varam. Think over and over again whether pleasures have made us stronger or it has left us weaker. Hmm? So that was the third verse. Now if somebody has said that, okay, Bhagwan, I understood that these three things cannot be goal of life. Secular knowledge alone, wealth alone, pleasures alone. Alone word is important. Eh? It is not dismissing wealth, not dismissing secular knowledge. The one who thinks that alone is goal of life, that is getting criticized. So now what is my goal? He says, Govinda should be my goal. Hmm? That Bhagwan to know more about his nature, to know more about my nature. That is my goal. Somebody who has understood that. What are the obstacles that can come even after deciding this as the goal? Those are elaborated after third verse. The first obstacle is there is a lot of time. Why start now? What is the hurry? There are so many urgent things, important things right now. Later we will see after retirement, I'll be more spiritual. Right now I don't have to invest in that direction. Then Bhagwan said, one should never think in that way. This life is very, very uncertain, like a lotus, a drop on a lotus leaf. Hmm. That verse also indicates, the fourth verse, not only life is uncertain, getting a human birth itself is so rare. Hmm. In that human birth, if one has not invested in our own unfoldment, in our own inner journey, he says we have lost a great opportunity. So that is why that example was given, Nalini Dalava, Nalini Dalagata Jalamati Taralam. This water droplet on a lotus leaf, like that our life is. So start right away, don't delay. I'd shared this example of uh, Swami Shivananji Maharaj, right? Did I share it here or no? Swami Shivananji Maharaj, his heart was such, whoever wanted to be spiritual at any time, he said, you just start. I will take care of everything following that. So one devotee came to him and said, Swamiji, I want to start doing Purascharana. Purascharana means several thousands of times you have to repeat a mantra, and there are a lot of rituals which are there, other practices which go along with it. Swamiji told him, you start today. That homa and ritual, I will do for you. After completing that Purascharana, whatever things are there to be done, I will arrange everything, but you start right now. Shubhasya Shigram, don't delay upon any of these auspicious sankalpas. That some other day, maybe if I commit right now, then I'll commit for a long time. It's a commitment that I'm making. He says, don't think in that way. Life is very uncertain and short. Start right now. Otherwise, life will be vidhi vyadi abhimana grastam. It will be in the snares of abhimana, which means a lot of pride about oneself. Or vidhi vyadi abhimana grastam. Vyadi means difficulties or different experiences that come at physical body level means roga, so many other things are there. This human body is always 
subject to this kind of vyadhi and mind is subjected to adhi, which is this abhimana. And such a wonderful thing is this abhimana. If you have 95 people telling something good, why 95? 99% telling something good and one person criticizing. That one person criticizing stays more than 99 good. Hmm? That is what this Abhimana does. In Puranas, it is presented in a very beautiful way. You know, like um, story of Daksha, Prajapati. He becomes Prajapati, right? Means he's like the CEO of creation. Anything has to be done, Prajapati has to give the approval. He goes into that sabha, and when he goes, all devatas stand up, except for Brahmaji and Lord Shiva. Hmm? How many devatas are there? 33,000 crores, let us say. Everybody stood up. Two did not stand up. That hurt him more than everything else. And he said, I will take revenge on Lord Shiva. How does he not stand up? And then you know the Satiji story, it goes into that. So Mahatma say, this is what Abhimana does to us, if one is not working on this Abhimana in the right way. Working on that Abhimana is Bhaja Govindam. Hmm? Offering it to Govinda, making it mellower with this idea that I'm a devotee of the Lord. So this was the uncertainty of life. Hmm? That becomes an obstacle for doing bhajanam of Govinda, thinking that there is a lot of time. Now there is another person who says, Bhagwan, I have understood that Govinda should be my goal, hmm? but I still don't have time. I'm still not able to commit. Bhagwan says, okay, what happened? This is my social contacts, you know? I have so many things to be done. Family is there, so many other commitments are there. And Outside also so many contacts are there, they keep me busy. I don't have time for Bhaja Govindam. So if that is the case, to that sadhaka, Bhagavan says, let us read the next verse, fifth verse. Yavadvito parjana saktaha Yavadvito parjana saktaha parivaro raktaha This verse you have done huh? in the last session. Yavad vitto uparjana saktaha. We can see it again, we can reflect something more. We are never short of content. Any verse you take, you will have something more to think about it. Yavad vitta uparjana saktaha. Until a point when a person is productive in life, when they are able to give something to others, they say only until that point everybody is around them. Yavad vitta uparjana saktaha tavan nija parivaro raktaha. His own parivara people, because of whom he was telling, there is no time for Govinda. He says they will be around only until we are able to fulfill some of their needs. Now this is a fact of life. Bhagwan says this is what I have noticed. We have to tune our thinking with what is Bhagwan trying to say. Paschat Jivati, even after he is unable to be productive, life still continues. And remember, this was during Bhagwan Shankaracharya's time, 1200 years ago. No 401k, no pension, nothing. They have to sustain after their productive life is over on the support of somebody else. Hmm? This is paschat jivati jar jar dehe, and abilities of the body are going down. Then vartam kopina pruchati gehe. Nobody is around to even ask about this person. 
and not somebody else is not asking her huh? in his own home vartam kopina pruchyati gehe in his own home whatever position he enjoyed whatever power he enjoyed every decision was taken after asking only but now he says nobody comes to ask him that is this sadaka and the main message here is while living our life living with this thought that i am here to serve hmm? we are here to serve but not expecting to be served hmm? not expecting to be served if somebody is serving well and good but not living with this hope that when we reach this age we are doing things because we will be served hmm? one way is that to think but more from our side we had seen in the last session last to last session as a duty from our side which is called as pitru runa hmm? it is not being said that one should not serve because the entire creation is this way what is the purpose of serving it is not said in as a duty standpoint it is said from an expectation standpoint one need not have this expectation one mahatma ji would say if we leave the world before the world leaves us there is less disappointment hmm? and his example was if you have a 100 dollar bill okay 100 dollar bill is there if i myself take it out and give it to somebody it is better than losing that 100 dollar bill on the way hmm? he says giving it by myself has less disappointment than that bill falling off or somebody pickpocketing it this is world is also like this more we give up this expectation that these experiences will make us happy the better off we are hmm? ramon marshi ji had a nice uh, story you know to explain the same point otherwise when you read the words you feel like it's very pessimistic the words itself one devotee came to bhagwan and he said um, he had lot of complaints about his own physical health the way doctors are taking care of him that the way his family is taking care of him lot of complaints he had and you know what was bhagwan's way of answering the question right he said who is having this complaint who is having this complaint you enquire there you will find pure consciousness which cannot have any complaints hmm? the very notion that you are complaining is a false notion but the devotee was not satisfied mm-hmm. he he had his own concerns he was not satisfied with this answer so bhagwan just uh, looked at his own feet and started massaging his own feet you know he said we are our own doctors we are our own sevakas only this much he said we are our own doctors we are our own sevakas still this devotee didn't get then he said i'll tell you a story there was one uh, renunciate one monk who wanted to become mathadipati mathadipati means head of a matha and the qualification for that was you should have at least few disciples <laughs> if you have to become head of a matha at least few you should have and he tried nobody stayed with him no disciples ekam eva advitiyam so he tried very hard and one day he had to go to a neighboring city but he said uh, okay i have to go there but nobody to carry anything so i myself have to carry my bag what will people think you know potential to be mathadipati bringing his own bag and everything but no option so he carried it on his head went from one house to another house hoping that nobody will be in the veranda and he can quietly keep that bag and say that his disciple has kept but every house he went outside somebody was sitting could not find a house finally he found one house nobody was outside people were inside so quietly he kept it there in a corner when this husband wife were inside they came out he said did you see my disciple he had just come i said which disciple no i had sent him with my bag to leave my you know belongings here somebody told me that you are a very devoted couple and very has lo- a lot of shraddha for all the sant mahatmas that's why i told him to leave it here see if he has kept it then they go out and oh yes yes he has kept this bag please come inside hmm? they do their 
do his other Atitya inside they are very nicely taking care of him. Now evening time, they say your student has not come yet. They say this all students are like that. Moment they see some bhoga, they become indulgent. He must have gone to the city and gotten stuck there. He has not come back, but he will come late in the night. You both go and sleep. I will take care. I will open the door and let him in. Now night he has to make, make up some story. So he himself starts talking. He opens the door, closes, and starts scolding that student. Don't you know that you should not come this late? I have sent you for some work, and you got stuck there, and so on. He says, now sleep quickly. Early morning, we have to get up and leave. And this couple is watching from inside, huh? all this thing, what is happening outside. Now, if he has done it in the evening, next day morning also he has to do the same drama. Before they wake up, opens the door, and says, OK, now it is time. Get up, go to that city, and get these things for me. So this person goes, this couple, they understand who is this you know, monk who is here. Now after everything is done in the morning, he has kept his bag outside. He says, I will just go to that river and come you know, for my daily rituals I have to do. He goes to the river, comes back. And what does the couple say? Your disciple took your bag. <laughs> Your disciple came and he said, last day I had missed it, but today I want to be ahead of time. I will take their bag away. And Bhagwan again looked at his feet, started massaging. He said, we are, we are our own doctors. We are our own sevakas. Means don't expect somebody to come and serve. If you do, he <laughs> will be like that. Mathadipati, who wanted to go somewhere, become something. If it comes, well and good. If it does not, no dependence on that particular thing. Because our goal is Govinda, goal is not this. Yavat pavano nivasati, yavat vitta uparjana saktaha, tavan nija parivaro raktaha. Now somebody says, you always give erroneous examples. You said family is like, you know, they are only around when uh, person is capable of giving something back. He says, every family is not like that. Hmm? So this sadhaka is telling, my family is very, very loving. Okay? It is not that they will give me vairagya in that way. It's a very loving family. Why do you say that? You know, yavat vitta upadhyana saktaha. He says, no matter what kind of sambandha we have, there comes a time when we have to walk alone. So to that sadhaka who feels that in spite of having a very nice sambandha, a nice family, because of that he is unable to give time for Govinda. Hmm? Bhagavan says, read the next verse, sixth one. Yavat pavano nivasati dehe Chati Kushalam Gehe Gatavati Vayao Deha Paye Bharya Bibhyati Tasmin Kaye Bhagavan says, no matter which sambandha we have, all that sambandha is valid only when pranas are functioning in this body. Meaning, only when there is a touch of life to this physical body, do we have all relationship with others. Hmm? In fact, the only way we are related to anybody, that is to this physical body. This we will see later in that verse also. Huh? As jiva, there is no relationship between two jivas. Hmm? As the transmigratory entity, which is a jiva, both jivas are eternal. Hmm? Both jivas are anadi. Between two anadi jivas, there cannot be sambandha. It is just like 
there is sun, there is sun getting reflected in a pot of water. Hmm? There is sun, sun getting reflected in a pot of water. Just next to that pot of water, you have a glass of water. Hmm? You have a glass of water and sun is getting reflected in that glass. Okay? <coughs> so that reflection of sun is called as jiva. Just like sun is getting reflected in that glass, in that pot. The reflection of consciousness in the subtle body is called as jiva. The pot represents physical body. Hmm? The glass represents physical body. So there can be several physical bodies. As many containers you keep, that many reflections will take place. Hmm? As many containers, that many reflections. So here also as many physical bodies, that many reflections will take place of jiva. But interesting thing is, what is the relationship between reflection A and reflection B? In the sun example, what is the relationship between reflection A and reflection B? He said there is no relation. If at all there is a relation, it is through the original. We can say A is also a reflection of sun, B is also a reflection of sun, in that way we are related. <coughs> but directly, it is just two reflections which are traveling the journey together. So we are co-travelers. Purpose is to make each other's journey comfortable and meaningful. Meaningful also. So Bhagavan says, Yavat pavano nivasati dehe, tavat pruchati kushalam gehe. Until there is life which is expressed in this body, only until that point, all sambandhas are valid. So there comes a point when this jiva has to depart. At that point, to the next destination, he has to travel the journey alone. Yavat gatavati vayav deha paye. This prana, it is the connecting factor between Sukshma Sharira and Deha. Okay, until the point pranas are there, this Sukshma Sharira is expressing in this physical body. When it has to go to next Sharira, this is it has to travel the journey alone. Gatavati Vayo Deha Pai Bharya Bibhyati Tasmin Kai. Even the closest Sambandha which is there, it says even they are afraid of only this physical body without prana. So the main message over here is seek that because of which even this inert body becomes meaningful. That Gurudev would call it as touch of life. Touch of life is Govinda. Bhagwan, because of whom this physical body is enlivened. You can say the reflection enlivens this body, but still, wherever there is reflection, there should be original also. That Govinda one should seek. If you want a simpler version, right, of this, you can say, we actually love a person not only because of physical body. There is something in them beyond this physical body which makes us love that person. You can call it as mind, you can call it as emotions, whatever it is. It is just like we love a diamond. But if you keep it in a treasury box, you love that box also. And diamond boxes are very nice. Huh? You have this, I have not seen it, but I have heard. All vel velvet is there, red color is there. But we are not loving the box for the sake of the box. There is something inside which is valuable. That is what we are loving. In the same way Bhagavan is telling here, inquire what is that thing which makes this body worth loving. Hmm? He says that is Govinda, seek that Govinda. Okay. If you want to appreciate this part, right, of uh, we don't love this body only for the sake of body, we should look at one episode in Bhagwan Shankaracharya's life. 
This is when he is doing a debate with Mandan Mishra ji. Mandana Mishra ji, who in his Purva Ashrama, his name was Mandana Mishra, and his wife's name was Ubhaya Bharati Devi. She is considered to be an avatar of Saraswati ji. And Mandan Mishra ji is considered to be an avatar of Lord Brahma. So when they were debating, Bhagwan Shankaracharya ji easily answers questions of Mandana Mishra ji. But Ubhaya Bharati Devi, she says, you have to answer some of my questions also. And she asks him some questions about Grahastha Ashrama. And Bhagwan Shankaracharya ji being a renunciate, he has no answers. So he says, give me some time, I will do Parakaya Pravesha and then I will answer your questions. Parakaya Pravesha means entering into some other's Sharira. So there was a king whose name was Amaruka. Amaruka. All this is said in Shankara Digvijaya. Huh? Vidyana Swamiji has written a text called as Shankara Digvijaya about the life of Bhagavan Shankaracharya ji. So there are some shlokas which talk about this. So there was a king, Amaruka, who was almost about to give up his physical body. So Bhagavan Shankaracharya ji enters the sharira of Amaruka. And suddenly that king becomes alive. Hmm? But the people around him are not happy. The queen is not happy. The minister is not happy and everybody else is not happy. Why? Because Sharira is of Amaruka, but the mind is of Shankaracharya ji. Means always meditating. Any topic you start, he will come to Vedanta. Hmm? They say, this is not our king. So then it is said, Shankaracharya ji asked that queen, what were you loving? If you loved the Sharira, the Sharira is right here. Hmm? So there is something more than this physical body that this person was really loving. Hmm? So here it is just this mind or thoughts. If you inquire more, where do these thoughts even get their existence from? What enlivens this body? He says, that is Govinda. Seek that Govinda. Hmm? So two verses, Bhagwan is telling, what is a healthy perspective towards family? Fourth verse, I mean, fifth verse and sixth verse, two verses on if social contacts and family becomes an obstacle, Bhagwan says at, it's only up to certain point hmm, that we can be relying on that. After this, we have to walk the journey alone. And the one who is going to accompany us on that journey, he says that is Govinda. In Bhagavatam, Bhagwan's one name is Avidnyata Sakha. That friend who was always there with, with us, but we conveniently ignored him. Hmm? This comes in the story of Puranjana. Hmm? That he gets so caught up with Puranjani, the queen, that he forgets Bhagwan. So later Bhagwan comes and reminds him that this Avidnyata Sakha was always walking. He is your true friend. And all Sambandhas are only through him. That reflection example, if we can hold on to it, all these concepts will become clearer. Hmm? Reflection A, reflection B, there is no direct relationship. It is only through that sun. So between two Jivas, there is no direct Sambandha. The ideal Sambandha is through Bhagawan. Hmm? That Bhagawan's blessing is there, that we are together and we will make each other's journey meaningful. Okay. Now somebody says, all this is okay. Hmm? You just told about healthy perspective towards family. Hmm? You said even if there are different, different emotions, different, different personalities within the family, one should learn to go and live through it. Hmm? If you want inspiration, look at Lord Shiva. Everything contradictory. Hmm? You know that story, right? If you just look at Lord Shiva, you will find all Paraspara Viruddha. He has a snake around his neck and the Vahana of uh, Ganesh Bhagwan is mouse. So snake is looking at the mouse. And the Vahana of Kartikeya Bhagwan is peacock. Peacock is looking at the snake. <laughs> and Vahana of Parvati ji is lion. Lion is looking at peacock. 
imagine the tense moment, you know, where everybody is looking at each other to jump upon each other, and Lord Shiva is in Samadhi. <laughs> and somebody said, that is why he is in Samadhi. <laughs> Doesn't want to come out. But that is the beauty of family life. That in spite of different, different personalities, if Govinda can become our goal, we can survive and thrive in any circumstance. If something else becomes our goal, he says that is when we'll have a lot of challenges within, a lot of anxiety within. So this sadhaka is okay. I have understood Bhagwan that Govinda should be my goal, healthy perspective, I got it. But now he says, I am too young. Now is not my time to do all this bhajan and go in there. Right now I am too young. Hmm? I have so many other things to do. So let the right time come, then I will go and do bhaja govinda. Bhagwan says, don't say that. Now this Bhagwan is telling 1200 years ago. Huh? He probably sent few of his students for a survey. He said, okay, I have come to this village, this town. Just go around and see what people are doing and tell them that I'm interested in teaching Vedanta. Are you interested? This was his question. The answer he found was this next verse now. What was his survey result? Seventh one. Balastavat Krida Sakta different people he asked. He wanted sample size, right? Appropriate sample size. So he took different age groups. He went to a child and said, I'm teaching Vedanta. Do you want to come? He said, I'm busy. Balastavat krida sakta hai. He said, I have to play my marble game. My friend is coming. I cannot come for Vedanta. As a child, krida has kept all of us busy. Huh? including Bhagwan Rama, including Bhagwan Krishna. In Ramcharit Manas, Goswamiji writes, Kausalaji would call Bhagwan Rama to eat. And Bhagwan Rama would say, no, no, I'm busy with my friends. And still she would pull him and feed him. In between, he would get up and run. That was uh, Krida Sakti of Bhagwan. Bhagwan Krishna, to what would say? Entire 10th canto is Krida Sakti only. In the beginning, Bal Leelas Bhagwan does. This is like that we have spent our childhood in play. Then he went to a young adult. Taruna stavat taruni saktaha. He said, I'm interested in going somewhere right now. I have a party to attend. I cannot come to your Vedanta class. First, first group gone, bala stavat. Second group, taruna also gone. Third, he came to vruddha. <laughs> He said, are you interested in Vedanta? He said, you come here, I will tell you something. <laughs> he made him sit and listen to all the things that were going on in his life. He said, Vruddha stava chinta sakta. So final survey result was the last quarter. Parame brahmani kopina sakta. In that supreme truth, there was nobody who was interested. Hmm? Now remember, this is 1200 years ago. Bhagwan is telling, in Brahman, nobody is interested. We should not be surprised in Kali Yuga, hmm? if we see it in this way. Now, there are several ways to look at this. Huh? One is from our own journey standpoint. If this is how a common person's life is, in childhood it goes in play, in youth it goes in some other indulgence. As we become older, 
different worries start bothering us. In the middle of that, if we are inspired to know a little bit about spirituality, that is the grace of the Lord. Hmm? We are grateful for so many things to Bhagwan. We should not miss this point. That Bhagwan, in the middle of everything, how you brought us on the spiritual path. Hmm? And that was the greatness of Puja Gurudev. That in the middle of all asakti, he added this asakti also for something higher. Hmm? Otherwise, imagine if somebody could not tell us in our own language, make us appreciate the value of these things in the way that we would appreciate. Hmm? These things are sufficient to keep us busy. Krida is sufficient, chinta is sufficient, and all other indulgence or commitment that is sufficient to keep us busy. And interestingly, these things are such, they will make us feel that we are very busy, but really they are not the important things which we should keep ourselves busy with. See, Bhagwan has not mentioned here that the youth was busy studying or the Vruddha was busy working. Those things are not actually a bondage. That is our Nitya Karma. Right? He is not criticizing those things. But he says there are other things which we might keep ourselves busy with. Those things are what one should change. If we don't keep ourselves busy with important things, every unimportant thing will look important and we'll be busy with that. That is the main top point of this verse. Eh? For a child, Krida is very important. Hmm? He is busy with it and he feels that that is very, very important. And Taruna Stavat, Taruni Sakta, he says that is also keeping me busy and according to him it is very important. And Vridha says if I don't do Chinta, who will do Chinta? For that person it is important. But Bhagwan says, really think what is the most important thing? Hmm? First thing is Dharma, that would be the most important thing. And second is Brahma, that is the supreme most important thing. From that standpoint, you look at your whole life, we can plan our whole life accordingly. Hmm? You see the beauty, huh? if Bala is in, interested in Krida, <coughs> Gurudev said, you teach them Bhagwan through that Krida. Right? So all our Balvihar, Shishu Vihar, younger grades, you see how nicely through activities, through games, same teaching is taught. Means at every stage, we need something subtler to shift our taste. If it is a Taruna, give them some food for thought. Hmm? Let them think about certain topics and find a fulfilling answer. About dharma only, huh? at that point even Brahma Chintanam is not required. How to be a better version of ourselves, how to overcome certain challenges we have with our own daily life, that will inspire a Taruna. And if somebody has lived a good life, dharmic life, instead of doing Chinta, that person can do Chintanam. Hmm? Chintanam means a disciplined Enquiry, not a random enquiry. Huh? Chintanam means you are training your mind to think in a particular direction. Even for uh, secular knowledge, they say, right? What is your discipline? They <laughs> say, so what is your discipline? Means what in what topic can you think systematically? If somebody is an architect, you say you give them a plan, you just give them some basic idea. They can systematically think through how you will enter the house, what different areas you would need, in which position, everything they can think through it. This is their chintanam. They have thought about that topic. Like this, in the same way this person has thought about Brahma. Hmm? Systematically studied and can enquire into Brahma, that can be done by Avruddha. Vruddha stava chinta saktaha, that is the opposite side. And the main message here is age has an impact on our thinking. 
but not necessarily on our spiritual journey. You can have a spiritual aspirant as a child, it can be a youth, or it can be an elderly person. Age is not the criteria to say that when we reach this age, only then we will become spiritual. So if you see somebody like Bhagwan Shankaracharya ji, at nine years, even younger than that, you know, that spiritual instinct was there. Swami Vivekanand ji, as a teenager, the questioning seeker in him arose. Somebody like Vidyarinya Swamiji, later stage of life, he becomes a disciple of Bhagwan Shankaracharya ji. So age doesn't have a specific correlation with respect to spiritual journey. So in Hindi there is a saying, Jab jage tabhi savera. Whenever we wake up, that is our dawn. We don't have to wait for some time. Because you know, if we wait, then we have regret. That maybe this knowledge should have come when I was 15, 20 years old. When we are 20, we think we'll start at 60, 70. But later we think we should have done it earlier. So that is this verse. It says age has an effect, but not necessarily on spiritual journey. Whichever time we start, that is good. Now this person is very, very motivated. Okay, he has understood different, different perspectives. He says, Bhagwan, tell me where to start now. I want to do Bhaja Govindam. I want to worship Govinda. Should I go and get a new asan? <laughs> hmm? Something which is very, very comfortable. And probably my lighting, you know, in the puja room, should I make it dim? Mood has to be created, incense stick. And you'll be surprised, huh? all of them are there. If you just search some of them, for different moods, they will have different incense stick. So the sadhaka says, uh, should I go and get them? Bhagwan says, for jnana marga, samagri is different. Samagri means ingredient. <coughs> he says, for jnana marga, the main ingredient that you need is a question. Unless we have a question, inquiry cannot begin. Hmm? So he says, I'll give a question paper, only five questions. You try to answer them, that is how we will start. Okay, so Bhagwan's question paper of five questions, see if you can answer them. Next verse, eighth verse. Kate kanta kaste putra five questions, eh? only then you can answer. First question is, Ka te kanta? Who is your wife? Hmm? Don't judge the question, eh? just note the question. Ka te kanta? Kas te putra? Who is your son? Who is asking whom? Bhagwan Shankaracharya is asking that Pandit. Okay. Kas te putra? Who is your son? Leave that next quarter. Come to the second line. Kasyatvam. Kasyatvam means to whom do you belong to? Kasyatvam. And then kaha is also there, right? That is the fourth question. Tvam kaha. Who are you? Hmm? Tvam kaha. And then kuta ayata. From where have you come? Kuta ayata. What are the five questions? 
No, no, slowly, slowly. Kate Kanta, who is your wife? Kahate Putra, who is your son? Kasya Twam, hmm? to whom do you belong to? Twam Kaha, who are you? Kutayata, from where have you come? All these questions, it looks like an immigration <laughs> list, you know? And they ask also in such a way that you give wrong answer. You say, I'm not married, you know, kate kanta. <laughs> Some answer you gave. These questions, even we ask, you know, whenever we meet people. Kate kanta, who is your wife? You'll say, last time when you came, the one who asked many questions, she is my wife. <laughs> Kaste putra hai. When you gave prasad, the one who did not take, he is my son. <laughs> you see, if you just give direct answer, what answers a person will give? Let us say that Pandita who is there. Huh? Kate Kanta, he says, what shall we keep wife's name? Haimavati. He says, Haimavati is my wife. Kaste putra hai. Devadatta. Is my son. Safe names, you know. <laughs> then, Kasya to whom do you belong to? This is my parents, Mr. and Mrs. Ayer. I am their son. Tvam Kaha, I am a Sanskrit Pandit. I went to this university, got this grade, got this rank, gold medalist. Tvam hmm? Kaha. Then, Kuta Ayataha, I was born in Kerala, then I moved to Kashi. And I've been living there for 25 years. Hmm? Bhagwan says your score is zero out of five. <laughs> Means you did not even understand the question. That happens, right, sometimes. When we don't get the question, our answers are hilarious. A teacher gave a test, you know. Correct the statement. I was the one who broke the window. I was the one who broke the window. The student corrected it. I was not the one who broke the window. <laughs> you see, you didn't get the question. Your answers are very off. Hmm? So Bhagwan says, whatever answers you gave, <coughs> they were assuming relations at a transactional level. Hmm? Take the first question only, Kate Kanta. You said your wife is Haimavati. But was she your wife forever? Or there was some time after which she became your wife? He says, no, after we got married, then only I started having that sambandha of a wife. Then who was she before she got married? She was daughter of her parents. So then where, where has she come from? You can say she has come from mothers whom she was born at some point. Then Bhagwan says, was she there before that? Or was she, is this her first birth? Hmm? Whatever you are assuming as an individual, was that individual there before this body? Or is it the first time that they are having this human body? Hmm? Now if you start inquiring, he says, entire samsara will become vichitra. Samsaraha ayam ativa vichitraha. Hmm? That we have taken several janmas in several shariras. And in this sharira we have this sambandha. Hmm? Now he says, I will tell you a few points by which you know the syllabus. Before answering this question, right? He says we have to do some more thinking on the basis of which we can again revisit these questions. Okay, then you see the questions will open up very beautifully and we ourselves will realize what kind of vichitra samsara this is. So many relations are taken for granted and we live all transactions just based on those relative identities. But for that, we'll have to continue in the next session. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Namaha Harihi Om